Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, it's been a little while since I've uploaded. Um, this is the Little Bean and Me podcast channel. My name is Kayleen. I am your host. I am the principal fiber artist and yarn dyer behind Little Bean Crochet on Etsy and LittleBeanLovesYarn.com. As always, I try and put the information for you on the screen here and also in the down box down below. Uh, we have a Ravelry group, uh, which is, if you search Little Bean and Me podcast uh, on the groups tab in Ravelry, you'll find us. And I believe if you're on YouTube and your web browser, there are links up in the banner above me um, on my main page where you can see the... Um, links to my Etsy shop and also to Ravelry and other things like that. So um, I hope you guys are doing well. <laughs> it has been a fair few weeks since I've uploaded um, and for good reason too. Uh, we've had some great weather here lately so I've been super busy with the children. Uh, getting out, doing lots of walking, having lots of fun, and then also um, I've been doing tons and tons and tons and tons of dyeing. Not so much stitching, but most mostly yarn dyeing a lot. <laughs> so um, if you've just found this podcast and you have no idea what this is all about, um, this is a small podcast. I try and keep it under 30 minutes or around 30 minutes uh, where I just talk about the things that I've been up to in my little crafty universe, aside from you know, just being a mom and taking care of my kids. But I talk about um, knitting and spinning, um, crocheting, mostly yarn dyeing because that's what I do as my work, what I like to do. And um, yeah, just all of those things. And sometimes I like to have some personal talk at the end just to give you an update on our life and what's happening. So now that I've rambled for a couple of minutes, let's just get into everything. Um, uh, as I said, I've done a ton of yarn dyeing uh, this week, so I'm going to save a little bit of that toward the end. I'll just share with you the small amount of projects that I've been working on. Um, I haven't done any crochet, but I have done some... Oh, actually, I haven't done too much knitting or anything like that, but I have done a little bit of crochet, but I've done Tunisian crochet. So in the last episode, I believe, was I was talking about Tunisian and I like it as a technique and I don't get to use it very often so I was really excited to just start on a project um, using Tunisian and I wanted to incorporate elements of color management so in a way that we can highlight a certain style of yarn so for me I wanted to highlight gradient transition so using a singular gradient from one skein and a solid color from a second skein and knitting it up or crocheting it up into a shawl so I started designing a shawl so I'm going to show you that right now okay so here's the shawl I am working it on my new DK weight base I haven't done too much dyeing on it I am using a size K hook which is a size 10 and a half 6.5 millimeter. There we go. Um, and these are the Knitter's Pride um, Interchangeables Dreams wooden hooks. These are very nice. These have a nice slick surface. They're not too grabby, so I'm enjoying them a lot. Normally, I'm a metal hook type of crocheter, so I really enjoyed having this. <clears throat> and then here is the project. So I am, it's in this bag. This was gifted to me by my lovely friend. I talked about it in the last podcast. Uh, I believe Ashley sent this to me. So here's my shawl. I'm starting to unravel a little bit because I am pulling on it. So I started working at this end and I started using the Entre les Lignes pattern, which I talked about last week, which is a Tunisian shawl pattern, but it's meant for fingering weight. And she uses a couple of different types of stitches in there. I wasn't really a fan of how the stitches were working up. So I started working um, some simple stitch, alternating each row. So I don't have to weave in any ends, but I am alternating every row. So I'm doing my forward pass in one color and my return pass in the other. So color one, I go across, color two return, color two across, color one return. So the the main color, the gradient, which is the lighter color down here, is the color that you can see kind of standing out. And so here you can see I switched over to a Tunisian knit stitch 
every other row so I'm doing a simple stitch and then a knit simple knit simple knit and I just continued 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 all the way out so the shawl shape is a triangle and let's see if I can get a good shot of the whole gradient so I wanted to do a shawl that would show off a gradient the colors are not any colors that I particularly chose to to use I just was I did a gray like a dark charcoal gray into an um, ecru color so you can see I started down here and I'm working all the way out so the angle is a bit wider um, it's not exactly a 90 degree angle at the bottom of the shawl and I'm just continuing to work across just playing around with stitches um, and how I am increasing and, de and decreasing along the edges so the increase edge is obviously this long edge here and then this is the end of the row so it's getting larger and larger and larger in this fashion so you can't even see the top of the shawl but that is how it is working so it's a shallow triangle and I think it's working up really nicely um, these two skeins that I'm using so this one is the gradient and as you can see, I am almost down into the um, darker part of the gradient. I still have a little bit of mid-tone charcoal here before I get into the dark, darkest part. So this is one. This is, this is the new DK base, which is 100% superwash merino, and it's 115 grams. And then this is the other color. So this is just a mauve tonal that I made just to have a color, a solid color. I was more looking at structure versus color or eye pleasing type colors you know um so this was on another sample that i got from my supplier i um asked for a sample of just superwash merino and then one that was superwash and nylon so this was 100 grams this is 115 so i'm going to run out of this one before i run out of this one so i'm just going to continue until i finish and just have this shawl this test shawl um, as you can see here i did some lace mostly because I hadn't done any Tunisian lace, so I wanted to try a simple pattern for lace, but I'm not entirely sure I would want it in the final shawl pattern. So this is pretty much the big project that I've been working on. It has come with me to playground, play dates, um, things of that nature, just working on it during nap time and bedtime. So we're really starting to get into the dark part of the shawl, and what's funny is the lighter, I started with the light end because there was less of the light end, so most of the gradient was darker. So I have probably half the skein still here to go, which is much, much darker. So I'm interested to see how far out, how many more rows I will get out of that. Because as you know, most shawls, especially if you start in the center and go out and down and you're continuing to increase your stitches, um, the colors, you, you're you know, you might have the whole center of the shawl one color, and as it grades out into other colors, the sections become shorter and shorter because you're using more and more stitches to get across. So um, I'm interested to see how that goes, um, but it's coming along nicely. It's something that I've just been working on in between dyeing, which I've been very busy with. So that's really about it. That's all I have. And once I finish this pattern, I'm hoping to have it done sometime in the next few months. Maybe I can do something for the fall, so maybe a fall Tunisian crochet along where you make a mid-weight shawl. It would take two skeins of DK weight yarn, um, and so that's what I was thinking about. That's it. <laughs> that's it. That's everything. That's all I've worked on. So um, I do have spinning to talk about today, which I haven't really had a chance to talk about too much spinning um, in the past, I don't know, month or two. Uh, I kind of took a break from my wheel. I didn't really have any fiber to work with, um, and so I was able to catch a shop update for Bren Boone. Uh, she owns Snurb Yarn and Fiber, and I believe I did show the braids off on the podcast a few episodes back, but I decided to try and spin. I was going to try and spin a single 
and then do a Navajo ply and have one extremely long gradient, but my bobbins only hold about four ounces of fiber. So I was having some logistical troubles. And then also the first braid that I spun, which I'll show you, um, got a little bit overspun as a single and it wasn't as consistent as I would like it to be to be able to apply it together with something. So I will show you what I've been working on. Okay, so this was the first spin of the fiber I got from Bren. So these came out like a gradient. They were an 85% Polworth, 15% Tussa Silk, I believe, and it came out okay. So you can see here that the, the fiber is overspun. It's twisted up a lot. There's a lot of little nubs, like curly cues in there, even after being soaked and set and thwacked and straightened out um, as best as I could. So this skein I don't think is going to be very usable unless I can find out a different way to um, to use it. But it's a bit too tightly spun. So for me it's not as pleasing to the touch because there are these little rough bits that are in the wool that normally wouldn't be there. Uh, but it goes from a mid-tone magenta type color into blues and then into this kind of gray brown color. And it's very pretty but I'll just have to find a suitable project for it. Or I might, I don't know, I don't know what else I can do with it if I could um, maybe run it through the, the, the wheel backwards just to take out some of the tension, but I don't want to undo the setting that's happened in the, the thicker bits because there's less spin. So if I ran this through the um, spinning wheel, if I ran this through the spinning wheel, like parts that are a little thicker that have a little less twist in them would probably disintegrate. So I don't know what I'm going to do with this. We will just have to see. Um, but I did have one really successful spin. So this is something that I just shared on Instagram today. Today is Sunday the 23rd? 23rd? Let's see. Sunday the 23rd. I was right. Okay. <laughs> Sunday the 23rd. That's today. So um, this was the second braid that I had from Bren. And this went from this very vibrant magenta into these blues and then into more muted blues and then into greens and yellows. So it grades out very nicely. So this I took a similar approach as I had done with the first braid where I just spun it across the top, which means I just, I just took it and spun it as a single, you know, as thinly and as consistently as I can. And I did it in order. So I didn't, you know, fold it up or separate the braid into big long strands and then spin it that way. I literally took it from one end of the braid, you know, did my pre-drafting and spun from the end and went through every single color, every part of the braid from beginning to end. And then what I did was Navajo plied it, which is a three ply technique that plies Sorry for that, if you can hear the car, <laughs> that's outside. Um, but it's a three-ply technique where you're plying the yarn on it, back onto itself. It's also called chain plying, um, and it's a really nice way to keep a gradient transition intact instead of having to split your, um, split your bobbin into two sections and then, you know, breaking up the color transition so it wouldn't read as a gradient. So this reads as a gradient. It's probably 110 yards or so. It's It varies from probably a worsted, so this is probably close to a worsted weight, to a chunkier weight, so a, a bulky, light bulky. So probably here is a good example of a bulky part. It's not too thick and thin. It looks it looks pretty consistent at, from an eye. Um, if I'm looking at the plies in the yarn and what I was working on, you can see some parts where I had thicker and thinner in the same place. So you can see the inconsistencies in my single spin. Uh, but 
Again, that's what I'm working on, but I think it's definitely a far improvement even from the last time I spun, which was the Cherry Cola um, yarn that I knit into a hat for my husband. So anyway, so this is the other project that I've been working on. So I'm happy that this is done and I'm wondering what I want to do with it. These seem like my daughter's colors, so maybe I'll make her something really beautiful from this. All right. So in terms of other work that I've been doing, aside from my normal uh, dye-ups, I did an Easter project with my daughter. Uh, we took some of the Easter egg dye tabs and we dyed some yarn together instead of eggs. So my son, he's allergic to eggs, so we can't really have, you know, hard-boiled eggs hanging around the house. We do have eggs in the fridge, but, you know, we have to really control where they're at and what they're doing. So I was like, well, let's just dye yarn instead because we can use the same tools that we would for dyeing um that we would dye the easter eggs with we can dye the wool with that's what I'm trying to say so uh we did that and I'll show that to you right now all right so I did show this on Instagram um if you're ever missing me here and you're wondering what I've been up to you can always check me out there but uh I did share it there but this is what Cecilia dyed so it's well it is mostly a pale yellow and it has bits of light blue and orange and green and purple kind of speckled in there. So this I also did, this is on the DK yarn, and I did it on this because I wanted to test it out and make sure I liked um, how the yarn was going to stitch up. So I did this for her, and I'm going to make her something really lovely out of it instead of, you know, doing the Easter eggs, because this last longer <laughs> it's much nicer I think um, as an alternative so if you're looking for something to do I know it's past Easter now but for next year and you didn't want to just dye up Easter eggs you could do that you could buy some bare wool go to knit picks and grab a skein or two of your favorite bare wool and um, dye up with Easter egg colors so you can also do it with food coloring as well so it's a nice kid-friendly activity and if you're planning to make something for your kids and they're really picky about colors they can pick their own colors and dye it with you and it's really fun so that's that okay so let's talk acquisitions I did have a couple of acquisitions uh, one I got a few weeks ago which again I shared on Instagram but this was a gradient that I purchased from uh, Wendy's Wonders so this is Wendy Cournoy, 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 bleh. <laughs> I can't ever say her name, Cournoy, um, and she's the dyer behind Wendy's Wonders, and she's mostly known for her gradient work. So this one is called Plum Flower, and it's on her DK weight base, and it is about 230 yards, superwash merino, and so I'll show you the colors all laid out. So it goes from this really nice, deep navy into more plummy purples and then into pinks. Let's see if I can get a good shot for you. Here we go. So you can see the transition here from a blue toned navy, which is kind of hiding behind here, into these plummy colors and then into these lighter pinks. So this color palette was right up my alley and I was thinking I really wanted one of her gradients because I had not tried one yet. And I also was thinking, um, to use it in my shawl design because I like the colors of this and I could dye a tonal to match and then use this as my proper sample. Now normally I would be like well I'll just dye my own gradient but I really like Wendy's work and I want to feature her work in this design. So that was that. And then the other acquisition that I got I just received yesterday. So this I ordered from AGH the wools and um, AJ Bishop she is the dyer behind this shop and she is fantastic so I was talking about Bren's work which is also fantastic but she was having a spin along and she was offering you know uh, options on different bases now you can tell I have a certain color palette that I like so you're gonna notice it again <laughs> Um, so this was the braid that I purchased. This is a 50-50 blend of ooh, super fine or fine, I don't know, super fine or fine, 18.5 microns. School me, I don't remember. Um, merino wool with 50% mulberry silk and it's called Galactic Adventure. So it's this beautifully saturated 
purples and blues and greens and black, like nice dark, 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 deep dark black. Um, I know it looks a little blown out here, but it is, it is quite dark. Um, and it has this lovely sheen from all of the silk. And of course you'll notice that it's all the same type of colors. So they're definitely colors that I like and I'm really excited to spin on it. So she is doing a spin along with this fiber. So I'm excited to spin it. And I'm going to try again to spin as thinly and as consistently as I can. I'm really trying to work my way down. I spin a single around fingering weight, so I'm really trying to work my way down to a lace weight because I want to be able to chain ply the yarn to be around a DK weight um, in general. So I'm really working hard on that. So this is the fiber I got. So this is going to be next on my spinning wheel and I can't be more excited about it. I think I might put this on, put this on my wheel when I'm done filming this and editing. All right, so the last thing I have to talk about is some dye work. And boy, have I been busy. And I am going to be even more busy in the next couple of weeks, so I don't know how much of a sh like update that I'm going to be able to do for you guys here on YouTube or shop update next week, only because I'm going to be working very hard to get kits out. So um, as a lot of people know, that you may know, um, there's a big knit along called the Starting Point Mystery Knit Along and it's hosted by Hohi Logatelli and she is a you know prominent knitwear designer. She's done the designs like the three color cashmere shawl or the three color cashmere cowl. Those are most of her like more well-known um, designs but if you follow her at all on Facebook or Instagram you'll know that she's launching up this big knit along and it kind of rivals the find your fade so if anybody jumped on the fade train when it came along and you it's a nice stash buster you can pull stuff out it was a seven skein project huge but really fun and everybody was enjoying it this seems like it's going to be a similar thing so her shawl design requires five full skeins of yarn at at least I think 400 to 420 yards a piece and so I decided I wanted to dye some kits for this because I missed out on the whole find your fade dyeing kits getting coordinating colors together um, more because the find your fade I feel like was a little more geared toward taking what was in your stash and finding what works together by laying out your skeins and the whole nine. So this one I was really really into trying to make a kit and she said you know any dyer who is interested in making kits should message her for um, you know kind of like Hohe approved color types and you know the types of yarn that would work well with her design. And so I did and she sent me information back and so that's what I did. I dyed up a couple of kits and I'm gonna show them to you now. Um, as you're watching this, this is Sunday the 23rd. Things are still up for pre-order until Thursday of this week. So on Thursday when I wake up, I'm closing out the pre-orders. So I am offering these kits on four bases, the Everyday Sock Base, the Sparkle Sock Base, the Luxe Sock Base, and then I'm also pulling in a special base, which is a 50% 50-50 uh, Superwash Merino Silk per request by a lot of people this week. So I'm going to show you the two kits that I've been working on. Okay. So the first kit I'm going to show you is based around my prongs colorway. So if you've been following along my shop, um, or uh, here on YouTube, you'll know that I dyed up the Marauders of the Marauders map. So this is the Prongs colorway. It's a warm tone brown with some sagey greens, red speckles, green speckles, yellow speckles, pretty much all the speckles. And so I wanted to make a kit based around this color because this is one of my favorite colors. I feel like it has a lot of wonderfully complementary tones in it. Everything feels like it goes well together. So I wanted to pull some of those tones out and make a kit. So I'm hoping that this is going to come up as true to color as it can. So this is the kit that goes around the prongs colorway. So we have a very, very, very pale yellow tone. Um, it's a very warm yellow. It is not ecru. It is dyed. So it is very pale. It is the same color. I pretty much pulled some of the colors out in different values, uh, but the deeper yellowed 
speckles that are in here is actually this color. This is the powder concentrated at its most like potent level, but this is the color of the yarn when it's been diluted and whatever. So that's one color. And the other color that's in this kit is this beautiful blue-green uh, mid-tone kind of sage color. It has some yellow undertones to it, um, very gorgeous. Again, same color that's used in the yarn. This is a mid-tone warm brown. I think the color name is Fawn, actually. Um, but I changed the concentration to suit what was needed for the cow. Whee! And then the other color that's in here is a very deep uh, mahogany black. So it is a black brown color. It does shift slightly purple. It's not um, totally purple, but it's it's very it's a brown black, but it does have a purple shift, like a purple undertone. So very beautiful. The sparkle shows so nicely in the light. So that is the first kit, that's the prongs kit. And then I decided, because of requests, uh, to do a brighter kit because some folks are really into bright colors and I thought I would pull in the Don't Call Me Nymphadora colorway. So this colorway I did release this past weekend on Everyday Sock and Sparkle Sock in the shop. Um, it is bright pinks, purples, greens, blacks, uh, gray, all, all sorts of speckled colors. There we go. So I wanted to pull in the colors that are used to make up the main skein. So these are the five colors that are in this set. So the light and bright color, this is a very uh, vibrant pale chartreuse. So this is the light, the light color of the set. Then the mid-tone colors that are in this set are a blue tone purple and a magenta. I'm sorry there's like a little bit of a yellow cast on this, but I had to turn on a secondary light to make sure I had enough light to film. Um, so it's a blue toned purple and a magenta. And then the dark color, this is a dark black. It's a, yeah, it's pretty black. I would say, but it definitely has this pink shift. So when I dyed this black, I also used the fluorescent pink that is in the um, the main colorway to give it a nice pink undertone. So this is a black, a black, but with a pink shift. And you can kind of see it here in that part of the skein. Best. So those are the two kits I have up. Again, they're up until Thursday, and I'm starting dye-ups this week for all of the orders that I have coming in. There's a lot of orders. Um, Ho uh, Hohi had shared the um, shared my shop's pre-order photo on her account, so I've had a ton of people coming over from her page. And if you're coming from there and you found me, thank you so much for coming <laughs> coming by. I hope you stay. I hope you enjoy the yarn that I make. Um, and I hope you enjoy stitching with it and making beautiful shawls because that's what it, it's really all about. Um, so yeah, I've just been inundated with tons of messages and orders and just lots of people sharing their love for the the, the mystery knit along and also for the color palettes that I've chosen. So um, if they seem like they're up your alley and you're going to work on this um, knit along, definitely come to the shop, place an order before Thursday. Um, anything that's placed in this round of pre-orders is going to be shipped out by on or before May 5th. So I want to make sure that you can get your yarn before the knit along starts. And the knit along starts, I believe, May 15th. So that gives a pretty good buffer time for everything to get to you. So anyway, as I'm speaking, I'm getting messages, messages, messages. But anyway, so that's really all I had to share with you today. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Um, 
So I'm hoping that I can have another one filmed up for next week. Uh, I wasn't expecting there to be such a huge response to my kids, but there has been, which is great. So I'll have to maybe put um, filming on hold for a little while. But in the next podcast, you'll probably see the finish shawl and more, you know, knit work. Hopefully I'll get to some knitting and some more spinning. So you may see the end of the, the uh, spin along for the galactic colorway, which will be really fun. And um, yeah, so that will all be coming your way soon. Uh, as always, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. If you like this podcast, make sure you give it a thumbs up down below. And if you're not subscribed and you like to be, you can always hit the subscribe button so you don't miss when I upload a video. Um, only because who knows when I'm going to upload my next one. Hopefully it will be soon. So I will talk to you guys soon and have a wonderful day. Bye!